hey, I put up a post today asking for questions about baby rattlesnakes, and that's really relevant right now because they're gonna start showing up everywhere. For the purpose of this video, because this is what most people are gonna see, we're pretty much just gonna be talking about Western Diamondback rattlesnakes. So some basic information to start, as a lot of people know, rattlesnakes do not lay eggs, they give live birth. Um, they're going to give birth to clutches from about six babies up to about 15 or so. They're gonna come out between eight and 10 inches long. They're going to stay with their mothers for about a week to 10 days. Then they're gonna shed their skin for the first time and then they're going to just distribute everywhere and try to figure out how to live. During that time, there's gonna be a lot of random movements too. So uh, unlike the rest of the year where snakes are usually attracted to a particular plant or a shaded area, baby rattlesnakes are moving far and wide just trying to figure out places to live. So they're gonna show up unexpectedly in a lot of places that kind of break the normal rules. Uh, baby rattlesnakes are born with a first segment of rattle. It's called a pre-button. After they shed their skin, a few days after they're born, then they get another little notch in it, and that's called a button. So rattlesnakes are born with a rattle. There are no scenarios where a rattlesnake is born with a pointed tail. Baby rattlesnakes are not more dangerous than adults. This is a really common myth. It's something that people talk about all the time. Um, every time that I'm giving an education event, this is the one that everyone's heard of. Uh, there's a couple different reasons that people say that baby rattlesnakes are more dangerous than adults. One of those is that their venom is more toxic. Some of that can be a little bit true just because baby rattlesnakes eat slightly different things. Their venom is going to be made slightly differently. So that could have a different reaction with the person, but it's not so much that it's going to override the real factor with how bad a bite can be, which is venom yield. How much venom is given by a baby versus an adult. And that is, the, probably the top reason that people think that's true. They say that baby rattlesnakes uh, don't know how to regulate their venom. They are too inexperienced to know how much venom. So they always give you all the venom that they have versus an adult that's very metered. And that's not true at all. If you wanna look up more information about that, look up, uh, the term is venom metering. Uh, you also wanna look up a fellow named Bill Hayes, who has done a lot of work on this and a video from uh, a series called the Venom Interviews that explain this a lot more in depth than I'm going to do today, but not true at all. Baby rattlesnakes, not more dangerous than adults under any circumstances. If you see a baby rattlesnake, it doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be more or that the mother is nearby. If you see a pile of baby rattlesnakes, then that's that scenario. But once they leave that, once they shed their skin and take off, um, they really don't have anything to do with one another for a little while. So seeing baby rattlesnake in your yard is about a random, uh, as much of a random event as you're gonna get. So don't worry about it too much. I mean, if it's a brand new one, then we'll still look around to see if there's others, but for the most part, it does not indicate that there's more. So very importantly right now, always use a flashlight and shoes to go outside. Doesn't matter if you're just running out for a second to get something out of the car, keep a charged flashlight and a pair of shoes handy all the time so that you can get out there and don't step on one. Baby rattlesnakes, they do have a rattle segment, but it doesn't make any sound yet, so it's very easy to step on them. So easy way to do that, wear shoes, use a light. And it's always a good idea to start looking at other preventative measures. One of those is getting your dog trained so that it is not uh, curious about rattlesnakes. We recommend a great company called Rattlesnake Ready. You can get them at rattlesnakeready.com. Also, it might be time to evaluate whether or not you need snake fencing. We work on that. You can message us or email us at fence at rattlesnake solutions if you want us to look at that. But uh, both of those solutions are made with baby rattlesnakes in mind as well. So those are the basics. And I'm gonna get to some of the questions that people ask. If there's a question that I just answered in the things that I just talked about, I'm not gonna bring it up again in this video, but you can ask more about it in the comments and I'll get to it there. The first one is from Rodney. Are they really rattlesnakes if they don't have rattles? No. Rattlesnakes are born with the first rattle segment, and if it doesn't have that, then it's not a rattlesnake. So Jackie asks, what do they eat? And does the mother care for them at all, or just give birth and crawl away? So they are opportunistic. They'll eat a lot of different things that might include invertebrates, um, mice, of course. They'll even go for adult mice right away. I've actually seen some Western Diamondback babies that have been killed in the wild because they've eaten rodents that are too big for them. They eat a lot of lizards as well, and that's a big part of the reason why their venom might be made a little bit differently when they're young, because the stuff that kills a, vet, a lizard effectively um, is gonna work differently on a rodent. And after they're born, they do stay with their mother for a little while. So um, during that first 
critical phase when they haven't shed their skin yet. Um, they really need to stay hidden. Their skin lacks a certain lipid that prevents it from losing moisture. So for a little while, they really need to stay put and their mother stays, them, stays with them as well, and protects them. Um, social rattlesnake behavior when it comes to care for babies varies quite a bit from species to species. It's something that is um, just starting to be studied in depth uh, if you really want to look more into it, look into some of the work that's been done with Arizona black rattlesnakes. I'll leave a link to some of that in the comments. Andrea asks, why are they so freaking adorable? I don't know, but that's accurate. Jay asks if they dump all their venom when they tag you, or is that just a myth? Um, it's a myth. Baby rattlesnakes, when it's looked at, um, have just as much control or not control over how much venom they give as the adults do. Again, that's one to look into venom metering um, to see the details in that, but the idea that baby rattlesnakes always give you all the venom that they have is just false. And I do realize that what I just said might contradict things you've seen on Animal Planet or the Discovery Channel or on the local news or in a lot of really reputable places. Um, it's a really good example of how poorly a lot of stories about rattlesnakes are actually researched. So even in places like that where you expect to see something that is reputable and true, they just make stuff up as they go along. So according to the research on it, it's not true at all. Michael's asking why they don't have a theme song like the Baby Shark song. Um, I love rattlesnakes, but it's probably not a good idea to mix babies and rattlesnakes too much. But uh, if someone wants to record that, I'll post it. Greg's also asking how far they travel to find a home territory, um, how long before the average snake finds a suitable place, and do snakes of any age migrate if food becomes scarce? So the answer to that is based on too many factors to really come up with one answer. Um, it really depends on the number uh, the amount of prey in an area, the types of features that are there. I know that some rattlesnakes, when those things are abundant, will live their entire life in a very small area. So I see speckled rattlesnakes that they spend the winter up on a cliff that's right up below a wash, and they spend their entire life just moving back and forth within maybe a couple hundred yards. Um, where other rattlesnakes, diamondbacks, move for miles to find food. So it really depends on what's there. And if there's enough food and spaces there, they kind of fill the space of their container. So I'm sure if there was not enough food in the area, a lot of times they'll go wandering looking for it, but we do see starving rattlesnakes out there too. So that's not always true. Joel is asking what the hardest species to get eating as a captive bred neonate is. Um, I don't know, probably one of the montane species like a ridge nose rattlesnake, I have a hard time with sidewinders, but I think a lot of the time that people have a hard time getting them feeding, it's just husbandry stuff, but that's a whole different topic that I won't really get into very much. When he's asking how much venom does a snake have? If it bites a larger predator, does it use all of its venom? And how long does it take to replenish the venom used? Um, they use about the right amount of venom for what's there. And I know that's kind of not an answer, but they're informed by a lot of different factors. One of those is whether or not it's a predatory bite or not, or a defensive bite, um, the size of its prey maybe. There's a lot that goes into it, but they seem to know about how much to give. And some of it's just kind of a random event too. If they catch both fangs and they're really good, or if they just get with one, or if it's just a scratch, or if it has to go through fur or clothes, that's going to affect the amount of venom in there too. So it's really hard to um, have any really solid numbers on that. And how long does their venom take to recharge? Um, I don't really know. <laughs> I gotta look that up, but um, I know they don't really use all of it. There's not like really a time when they use all their venom and just don't have any more. It's kind of like asking um, uh, how, how much do you have to wait to spit before you spit again? Well, you always kind of have some there. And rattlesnakes, if you look at their head, the cheek area on the sides, that's their venom gland. And I've seen rattlesnakes that don't have any venom in there. It's just because they're severely dehydrated or malnourished or just gave birth. And their head looks very different. So if you see a rattlesnake and it has big poofy cheeks still, it still has plenty of venom. And I see a lot of times where a rattlesnake bites something and venomates it clearly, uh, and then bites it again to give it more venom and it still has plenty of it. So they don't really use it all at once like that. Susan is asking what time of year they're born, specifically in the San Francisco Bay Area. 
around the same time as here, so late summer um, into the fall. So uh, late July through about the 1st of September is we're gonna, when they're really gonna have most of their babies. That's immediately followed by a mating period in the fall uh, and then another mating period in the spring. So I've seen it brought up a few times um, that, you know, are they giving babies twice? I thought babies are born in the spring. They're not. They're, if there's any babies surviving in the spring, it's because they made it through the winter and are still around. Babies are born in the late summer. And the last one from Jody has to do still with the amount of venom that babies give. So I know I said I wouldn't cover uh, questions that I've brought up before, but this is interesting because in all the places that I posted um, information about baby rattlesnakes today, um, this seemed to be the most common bit of information that people wanted to know more about and also the most common myth that most people believe. Even places um, that really put out a lot of information about snakes like uh, state agencies and the news and a couple of rangers I've talked to, um, they believe this is true. And it's not anyone's fault necessarily. This stuff is so pervasive, it's so well covered in the news and out there that you can do your homework, you can search for it, and you can try to figure out whether this is true or not, and still have a completely wrong answer on it. So uh, you can't be blamed for that, just like a lot of other rattlesnake mis misinformation that's something that our culture really seems to love. But yeah, baby rattlesnakes, um, not more dangerous than adults. So if you know someone that says that, then you can correct them. And I'll give you some information in the comments to this video uh, that you can use to copy and paste from a reputable source uh, that you can use to combat that. So that's it. We're going to be seeing some baby rattlesnakes showing up at relocations this week. Um, when we catch them at someone's house, what our policy is, and it's a little trickier because they don't have that skin that can really keep them from drying out. What we do is we hold them. Normally we release the snake right away. If it's baby rattlesnakes, um, we keep the mother with the babies all together until after their first shed. Usually that's just a, a couple days um, after they're captured. And then we go release them all together back in the area that they need to go just as if we were to release them right away. That just gives them the best chance at life. They don't really have any ability to tolerate any new stress or any change uh, of environment from the situation that their mother very carefully selected to give birth of them in. So it's really essential to wait until they're ready to be released um, to do that so that they can survive. But as soon as we get some videos or pictures of the first baby rattlesnakes that we get, uh, hopefully with their mothers, um, I'll post them here and maybe talk a little bit about it, but it's always an exciting time. Uh, for us, it's always fun to go catch 15 rattlesnakes at a time at someone's house. Maybe not so much for the homeowner, but it's uh, in this kind of work, that's the, the fun time of year. So, all right, thank you for the questions and I'll do more of this in the future.